Hello. Uh, oh, 10 seconds have passed of total silence. Can you hear me? Hello, everyone. Uh, sorry about that. A little bit of a little bit of a delay, you know. Uh, why not? It's only because it took, it took me until about 30 seconds ago to finish the slide deck. Let's just pin this tweet. Uh, pin, 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 pin. We're live. I'm stuck in the HS2 hashtag to bring many angry people here. Um, Jermaine, hello. <laughs> John, hello. Yes. Can people hear me? I am saying things. Uh, you can hear, look, look, some, uh, let's go big face. Big shout out to, uh, to X-Rail here for the merch from the old, uh, <laughs> from, oh, also, oh, there we go. Greens for HS2, shout out. They have merch. Go buy merch from them. You'll be supporting, actually, you are technically just supporting the main Green Party by doing that. But anyway, the point is you, you get merch like this, like this, and it says, there's many good merch. Um, I'm going to drink a little bit of water. So, oh, right. It's the big one tonight. It's another HS2 one, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> how are you all doing? You all well there. Remember to at me in if you have queries and questions. Um, uh, right, so, yes, I have heard Jermaine's news. I should have put that in, actually, shouldn't I? Jermaine, I should have put your Gronk in. Uh, that was awesome. Anyway, right, enough of me waffling. Uh, what counts as an unusual... So this is a, a, an in-joke, really. It's referencing the time that former... Well, he still technically is head of the Green Party of England and Wales. Uh, John Bartley accused, like, a load of experts... He just, just hand-wavingly dismissed a load of people who were saying you're speaking nonsense on HS2 as the usual train spotters. Hence what this T-shirt's about. It felt appropriate. Um, oh, the, the bingo... The bingo will be back. It's uh, it's down at the moment. It'll be back next time, don't worry. So you might be missing out on the scores for that. Uh, likewise, the podcast is is down for a little bit, but admin, it's my it's my admin. I'll I'll get I'll get on that later. But it, it, it might be a bit of a blip in in service for those. Anyway, I'll, I'll cover that later. Let's go back to the slides. So, oh now, do I want my mouse to wibble around? I probably do, don't I? Uh, right, it's episode seventy nine. Why is there no HS one HS two link, and how should it look if there was? Um, there's going to be quite a lot of big face in this. Hopefully this won't take, the actual slide bit won't take too long and it'll mostly be a large face Q&A like the olden days. Um, but let's crack on, first of all, with, uh, not with the news, but with uh, with COVID numbers. Let's have a look what's going on, shall we? So, um, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Jermaine. I'm glad you enjoyed it. For anyone wondering, Jermaine got a Gronk, a Class 8 named after him. And uh, also named one of HS2's trains. It was like a, it was an awesome. I hope you enjoyed it, Jermaine. It, it looked good fun, and uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a nice moment. So uh, let's have a look at the the coronavirus stats for transport. So you can see a bit of a pitch downwards here of uh, of of relative numbers. And again, there are two. Th either it's because it's the bank holiday and there's a drop in commuter traffic, which is in and of itself interesting. Or it's because of the bank holiday being offset with last year's bank hol with with the, the pre COVID bank holiday stats, and so that's resulted in the pitch downwards. So it's a bit bit of a weird artifact, but it seems to just be going straight back up. And so it's a bit like this one we had here. You see, there's a similar, which I think was also around a was that also around a bank holiday. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, uh, you can all see this, can't you? Yeah, good. Um, so yes, uh, it's very str yes. It's not sure, but anyway, you can see the, the numbers peaked up to. Uh, actually, I can't remember what they peaked up to. They were what, what, what does that look like? It looks like it is um, the it's around seventy percent, isn't it? Yeah. So they kind of reached look like they reached a peak of around seventy percent, and then um, and then they've kind of done this weird artifacting pitch downwards, which I'm not sure is actually. But anyway, we'll keep watching. Uh, the key thing is that they stay above this this dotted line that we've got here, which means that they meet this. 75% uh, of pre-COVID ridership by the end of the year target, which was the one, the kind of the optimistic target set by, by government. Anyway, um, so that, uh, there we are. And, and the bigger picture across the whole year, you can just see that from the start of, from the start of 2021, uh, there is a pretty general trend and a pretty steep trend upwards towards, towards regular usage. It's just, at, at the moment, there's no sign of it reach, kind of tailing off and reaching an asymptote. Uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Ideally, we want it to kind of continue uh, until it reaches this line here, or ideally a little bit above it. Anyway, who knows? So, 
Uh, to answer the question uh, from Sir Corot, will this include a discussion about the King's Cross International? It could have been. Absolutely it will. Uh, stay tuned for that one. <laughs> um, oh, actually, that's a very good point. I, uh, oh, We'll get to it. We'll get to it. I, uh, if I go here, we're going to start with the news. The news. Let's look at the news. Um, do you remember that video of a, of a Range Rover? An absolutely frightening video of a Range Rover smashing into the side of an Azuma. Yeah, it turns out it was a signaler who had lost it, a signaling technician uh, who had lost the plot and just drove their... Yeah, there was a signaling tech... Michael Rochford. Rochford? Anyway. Uh, signaling technician trashed his Range Rover Sport into the side of an Azuma. Absolutely frightening. Uh, kind of feels like jail for 10 months doesn't really cut it. I, just the idea that anyone working anywhere near the railway... I mean, clearly... Something has gone wrong there. Uh, anyway, frightening. But uh, it's in the news, and go and read about it. There's a there's a good Grace Newton's put together a really good piece, kind of outlining it from in the Yorkshire Post. So go and support your local journalism and read the read the Yorkshire Post. Um, what else? Oh yeah, that's right. The uh, the Northern Ireland link that literally never existed and was never a real plan has been cancelled. Hooray! Uh, or boo, depending on whether you think it's a good idea. Um, yeah. So it's, it's it's this was never a real plan. It was just a, a load of nonsense. That has been, uh, yeah, that, that's just... But what it is is a canary in the coal mine because uh, it's indicative that Treasury is intent on slicing and chopping everything that's that's of any potential... You know, basically, is going to come through swinging and chopping and, and cutting. Um, austerity has never gone away, and it's back in a big way. So uh, not that it's, it's a canary in the coal mine. This, this isn't necessarily a big deal, although if you remember back to our episode uh, 33, way back when... Um, we, we all decided that actually the Northern Ireland link isn't necessarily a bad idea, if you remember. So actually, um, you know, maybe not the maybe not the, actually something to hugely laugh at because it, it, it's indicative of this government's lack of aspiration. Um, but although they were they were totally going to make it a road tunnel, so it's probably not a bad thing anyway. Right? Okay. So, um, shop stays slash shop scrapped. I don't know because I don't know. I have no idea. Um, no, no, it's uh, I, yeah. Anyway, I have no idea whether uh, wh wh whether he's gone in the reshuffle. Has it has, has it been announced yet? Wait a minute. Uh, Grant Shapps reshuffle uh, twenty twenty one. Let's see what happens. Uh, no such. Oh, he's been. Oh, it does. It does say seventeen minutes ago. It looks like he has been reappointed. So Shapps not scrapped. Let's uh, scribble scribble that out. No, he's he's not scrapped. No. Uh, he's still in. He's still in transport. So there we go. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, Will Deacon is pointing out that real people were working on the Northern Ireland link. Yeah, they were. Um, but given that there is uh, a chronic short, that there is plenty too much work going around, I, I, those people will be immediately redeployed. So I wouldn't worry about it, frankly. Um, the uh, the Hollyhead to Dublin plan inverted commas has also been scrapped. There's all sorts of stuff getting scrapped. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. So, um, here we go. Right. Uh, midlife refurbishment is what Shaps is going to receive, apparently, according to Richard Smith. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. No, if you want to talk about the Northern Ireland link, go watch that episode and comment underneath that in, in the YouTubes. Um, what else has been happening in the news? Uh, well, uh, I need to click on here to get my mouse back uh, working again. What's been happening? Um, the uh, yeah. The government's response to this petition states that HS2 will, and I quote, leave a long-lasting legacy for both wildlife and future generations. Well, yes, it certainly will. A long-lasting legacy of environmental annihilation, eye-watering expense, and broken promises. Because if you can't make a convincing case for a new... Rel This is me for the benefit of uh, audio only uh, listeners. This is me blinking and staying into the camera uh, with like a knowing slash frustrated slash disappointed sort of face. <sighs> yeah. Um, good grief, Caroline Lucas. What a load of absolute gibberish you are speaking. It's it, deeply disappointing for someone who's supposedly uh, all that the GPEW can muster into Westminster, it's so disappointing that you just have no interest in following the evidence whatsoever on this subject. Incredibly disappointing. Um, yeah, I'm not going to dignify with them um, with with continuing with with that. But that was the that was the HS2 debate. So I'm back. From, I've, I've made my face appear back from the news. That was the uh, that was the HS2 debate. It was Packham's debate because uh, he did a he did a, a petition and it got enough numbers to get a debate. 
and there was a debate and that was the end of that because uh it's not there was no consequence from the debate people seem to think it was a vote it wasn't a vote it was just a debate and it's happened um and that's the end of that so uh it's a bit yet again it's um it's a grift for for packham uh in that he's got a lot of attention once more and uh nothing meaningful has happened at all um oh by the way have you noticed i got a new where is it let's go but this oh, up here you notice these i uh, i got I found them on ebay <laughs> you recognize them for the benefit of audio only listeners Gareth Dennis is pointing with his Kajigger stick at two copies, or rather a single copy, of both volumes related to the first uh, reshaping of British Railways report. Anyway, um, oh, how did the government respond? Oh, the government responded with just a... Gen- the thing is, the thing that frustrated me, and I'm going to get to this in a second, the thing that frustrated me was that the people... Pr- there, is, there were a few good speakers, but generally the people supporting it were as clueless as the people opposing it. You know, we're 12 years on from this project. Um, no, anyway... So, uh, yes, deeply frustrating. Uh, yeah. So, um, right, what am I going to what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to no face uh, because, yes, that's enough of the news. We're talking about. Um, oh, let me do this and do this. Um, this is a piece I published back in blah, blah, when was it? September. Actually, weirdly, it was pretty much exactly uh, three years ago. Um, it was a it was a piece I published. And it's probably a piece I was pretty happy with. The, the previous one was kind of a, a bit, to be honest, a bit of a ropey uh, description or you know, justification for HS2. It was before I'd really sort of shaped and perfected my way of arguing the case for HS2. So the, 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 these pieces came as a pair. The first is a bit weak. I mean, it's fine, but it's a bit weak. Um, the second uh, is this, which is still holds absolutely true. And it basically, and, I, and I've put this up on Medium, so you can you can go and find it. You can just search um, HS2 will fail without a joined-up plan uh, on Medium, and, and you'll find this. And um, and it, it very much holds true, by which I mean, essentially, the point I'm making is that without a plan, without a strategy, without HS2 being part of a bigger plan, it will fail. And this is what's happening. This is what is hap- continuing to happen um, with HS2. The lack of a plan, you get people still saying, oh, it doesn't mean this, doesn't mean that. The reality is that without the bigger plan you will people will not believe the the main benefit of hs2 because the, that main benefit has yet to be proven as being realized yet so um it's yeah really not great really not great at all and, and so you know this is my premonition i said and you can have a read of this it's hopefully it's an insightful piece um i'd recommend having a read of it because it's utterly relevant to what's going on now um so yeah go and have a flick through that and this whole episode is going to be about not having a plan uh because we're going to be talking about the hs2 hs1 link um and uh and that is indeed that that's it let's let's stop wittering it's already 14 minutes past seven let's uh let's crack on with the episode shall we um thanks for joining and uh welcome to tonight's rail matter everyone <laughs> The Intercity 225 fades away. There it is. We shall um, make my miniaturized face appear in the corner. Hello, look, I've appeared in the corner. I'm, I'm here in the corner. Um, John, hello. John T. Stone is here. London Cycle Roots has joined. Uh, nice to see you. Um, yeah, you are the you are the audio-only listener-in-chief. Yeah, that's it. You've, you've yet to send me particularly dreadful feedback, so I, I take it they all vaguely work. Although, yeah, apologies in advance for... Well, apologies generally for the podcast. It's been a bit bitty because we have some admin issues and hosting issues and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I would like to start with a bit of a brief summary of what the heck the point of HS2 is, right? Um, it's interesting that John's joined, given that John probably mainstreamed the arguments I'd been making. I'd been making arguments for a while, and John, you mainstreamed... In fact, people thought John thought John was me for a while, which is even more bizarre... Uh, when when John released his piece in the Independent, um, but there's there is for me there's like a really refined and I'm compressing it further and further. There's a really refined um, argument for HS2, and I'm about to make it in large face uh, in moments moments while I while I catch up on the chat. And well, also I'm going to ca- I will be more interactive. I'm going to be paying attention to the chat this time because there might be lots of queries. So uh, let's go big face. So right. This is basically pretty much exactly the same as the video you'll see that was doing the rounds a little bit on Twitter uh, earlier in the week. There is a four-step logic for um, for HS2, for justifying HS2, right? 
four step logic everything else kind of pales this is the, this is the main thing four step logic number one um do we want to reduce britain's carbon emissions if the answer is yes you go to number two number two well how do we do that well okay transport is the largest source of of greenhouse gas um emissions in the uk right okay so um so so we need to do something about transport right okay so if you want to do something about transport emissions right well you need to look at what the cause for what is the cause for for transport emissions well okay even if you know even if you um reduce overall transport because of the fact that so much of movement across of things and people and things across britain is by um is by road um okay air also accounts for a, for a sizable amount and we can wipe that out with hs2 but road accounts for the majority of, of emissions even if you reduce overall transport there is an acknowledgement by you know this is not railway experts at all this is not biased people ever this is you know even the green part of england and wales themselves as part of their policy construction for their previous manifesto established that you need between 50 and 100 percent increase in rail capacity to drive the, to, to enable the modal shift away from cars even with an overall reduction in transport so that's your third point so this is before you're getting anywhere near you know the biased vested interest in the rail industry so that's three points that rely on climate science and policy wonks right before you're getting anywhere near people like me who just want to build railways right so it's only when you get to step four only on step four, which is right. Okay, so if we're going to increase rail capacity by between fifty and one hundred percent, how do you do that? What's the most effective, efficient, quickest way to do it? That's when the rail industry goes with pretty much an entirely united voice. Built HS two. Yes, do all the other things, but HS two as a project is by far the most efficient way to deliver that step change in capacity. That's your four step logic. It is as straightforward as that, right? Um, hopefully that that made good sense to everyone. But um, right. So, oh. Oh, let's go back to small face. Does that make sense? Right. In fact, let's go to big face and go through some questions. Uh, hello, everyone. It's nice to see you all. There's going to be, I, I promise there's going to be more interactive. So I'm going to try and, uh, oh, right. Uh, let's go through. Uh, Mental man has been waiting for this one. Oh, good. I, I, I'm glad. Messinal man. Sorry. Forgive me. Uh, Dave, I'm sure that the uh, integrated rail plan will make things clear, right? Uh, guy 16 is the rail piece you showed available online anyway? Yes, um, I can put a link in the description, but to be honest, just Google uh, my Medium page and it's right at the top. If you search HS2 will fail, Gareth Dennis, it'll probably appear. Um, actually, I can probably put the link in, can't I? Let me go. HS2 will fail. There we go. It doesn't take much. I'd literally just Google HS2 will fail. Right, the piece is getting linked in the chat. There you are. I've read of that. So, uh, right, uh, I keep going down. I'm just reading comments that have my name added, by the way, because that's the way I know you're asking me a question. Um, if there is a problem taking tracks away from the North London line, just run the trains through Paris, Amsterdam, Richmond, Clapman Junction, and Manchester Leeds. Oh, okay, right. There's, there's some detail going on here. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, uh, thanks, thanks for your comments, uh, uh, John. That's helpful. Ever uh, Smith, the point is to knock down two million ancient forests, right? Absolutely, yes. Oh, uh, right. So, oh. Will is saying a script for Ivor plus paraphernalia is in the Canterbury City Museum Art Gallery. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, Gareth, then, Gareth Williams is asking, what's the orange pouch thing above my left shoulder? Oh, we teased this in the last episode. This is a prototype. Uh, it won't be quite like this because we've updated it already and obviously the font's changed. Uh, that's the old font, uh, RIP Cabin Sketch. Um, th this is a face mask. There's going to be some merch. People have asked for merch. So there's going to be merch. That's what this is. Uh, it's not anything more dubious, don't worry. Anyway, right, enough of that. Uh, yeah, I'm conceited enough to have merch. People have asked for merch. They want Rail Natter merch. I only give what the, the Patreon people ask me to do. They are my boss. Um, uh, oh, yeah, Jermaine spoke to Mark Thurston and cited my, was citing me at Mark Thurston when you met him. I'm glad you did that, Jermaine. Thank you very much indeed. Good stuff. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, what are my thoughts on Shaps? Oh, let's not even go there. Uh, what's the second most project uh, important project after HS2? Uh, Trans Pennine connectivity has got to be the, the new line over the Pennines has, has got to be it. But there's, to be honest, it gets, feels like there's so many other important things after that. Uh, what else we've got? So um, now it's point. What's the orange thing over the right shoulder? Right shoulder. What's the oh this thing? Uh, it's just a sidewear gauge. It's not not hugely exciting. What what's which what, what is right right? Oh no, that is the thing. Other people have mentioned it. Um, right. Oh, next to beaching. Uh, yes, that's a it's a sidewear gauge. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, the mask. OK, got you. Right. OK, enough of that w w waffling. Let's get on with the show, shall we? So let's get my miniaturized face up. So that's why HS2 is a good idea. Oh, and yeah, if you remember, we went. This is this is a bit probably covering some ground. I'm hoping some I want some aunties to arrive. No, no one else has arrived. They're all in the book. Uh, I, I, 
Oh, someone send me a screenshot on Discord of which bit you mean, and I'll and I'll do the, I'll do a description in the Discord. Anyway, uh, also I'm going to have a pick pick stuff behind my shoulder uh, episode at some point. There's an increasing amount of interesting stuff appearing, uh, including over there. There's anyway, I will get there. Um, so you remember this episode, episode zero? It was incredibly shonky and rubbish, but we tried to answer some questions right. So hopefully it was good. But um, maybe I need to do a repeat of that with you know high quality and, and stuff, and maybe this can do that. So for starters, the recent history of the European connection. Let's start with that. And before I even go into the slides, I'm going big face again because uh this just arrived look at this the channel tunnel the facts from the channel tunnel study group from 1964 look at this and it's got this glorious image on the back look at this it's lovely isn't it car it's got le shuttle looking nonsense it seems to have people oh anyway there you go so that's that's the idea of le shuttle this is very car focused uh but it's got it's great it's got loads of it's all sorts of stuff but tunnel facts here yeah, yeah uh marvelous so um it's a really nice book uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, there we go, all this marvellous stuff. So that's an interesting one. I, I don't think it's going to be a page turn, but I, I might tweet some stuff about that. Um, everyone's asking about, yeah, no, 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 that orange thing, it's not a book, it's a pouch. This thing here is uh, it's, it's a sidewear gauge. It's just a sidewear gauge in a thing. I'm not going to get it down because we'll save that for another episode. Uh, or maybe some bo Patreon bonus features, right? Uh, right, anyway, sorry, I'm waffling. I'm doing a dreadful job of waffling. So let's let's crack on. So, 6th of May 1994, the actual channel, not the not the earlier plans, bearing in mind that that's from 1964, the original plans are being set up, but we finally opened it, um, you know, 30 years later in 1994. Uh, and actually that was before, service started, you know, in 1995 and even a bit later than that. So, uh, Master Trams is asking, would I be right in saying that without the Eastern Lake, HS2 is basically pointless? No, that's not true. It's still a hugely valuable upgrade to the West Coast Main Line. It just doesn't achieve its. It doesn't achieve that three main lines for the price of one benefit. So you really do need to have the whole thing. Oh, um, Dave, I do agree with the um, the proposal that HS2 should become an X shaped network. Yeah, Green Gauge Twenty One proposed that a long time ago. Uh, it should connect down to the main obvious gap, and it was really obvious in my first explainer that I did. In fact, that part one of that piece I was talking about a minute ago. Um, in my explainer in that, the obvious gap is actually connecting down towards the southwest from uh, the Midlands and Scotland and the north. So, yeah, the, the, it should be an X shape. Um, you know, at the moment it is kind of... Well, at the moment it's achieving what it does because the whole point is that it's replicating the existing pattern of services into London from, from everywhere in the north. So it's, it, it's uh, there's a reason why it does what it does. But if we're going to really improve local services, then we need to do the same job for the intercity services that don't go through London, like the cross-country services. Um and uh yeah so 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 that that does need um a bit of yes um there is a good uh, history of the channel tunnel on the on will as problem so yeah vigorous re recommendation for that but we're not going to dwell on the channel tunnel because i've written a piece about it well well as your problem po podcast have done it it's done to death we're going to jump forward to june 1999 and there's this report which is the the little report actually um which looked at uh regional eurostar services and what to do about them and actually you know what we're going to do going to open that dang thing and have a little look so here we are here is the report itself and um you can see here's the here we are da, 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 da. so this is looking at uh understanding whether it's a good idea or a bad idea and yes there are kind of all the standard things of so let's you know flick through you know, so executive summary um in fact to be honest it's probably easier to summarize it looking at the uh look at the challenges so cross-channel travel market large and growing uh, core markets of uh, kind of northern Europe, yeah, 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 saying that the the travel uh, that market is primarily London and the southeast traveling across, but then it would be because that's where the speedy networks are. So there's a bit of a uh, you know tail wagging the dog situation there, uh, and then a suggestion that the market the regional Eurostar could address is limited. So already in 1999, we've got this this inherent belief that there is no market to connect Britain to Europe, and I, and I have to say actually it's quite interesting. Uh, I should probably try and bring it up, actually, because it was a very interesting observation. Let's see if I can go down here. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Twitter is hopeless on... Here we go. Uh, David, here we go. Uh, let's go for... Yes, this letter here is very interesting. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna just refer back to this momentarily. Um, David, David, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. David Pilo. Uh, who did the massive carbon proofing thread that I'd strongly recommend finding. I've got that as one of my bookmarks. Um, did an FOI, which we're going to dig into later, but that's not quite relevant yet. But anyway, even in 1999, we've got this uh, inherent bias again, uh, this inherent feeling that there isn't a need to, to serve this market, which, anyway, yeah, we'll get there. So so this whole report basically goes through, and it kind of essentially justifies 
it's in the process of justifying stopping. This was used as an excuse to stop the process of um, actually enacting this the through services, and it it really came at a time when when the original the Channel Tunnel was was opened. In fact, when it was being developed, and even when it had just opened, there was still a belief that it'd be the, the right way to do. But but the it was just at the at the time that the domestic uh, you know short haul flights had become a real thing. Cheap short haul flights had really started dominating the market, and so rather than thinking let's take that back to rail it was just ah oh, let's give up let's not bother um so obviously people who are close to anyway blah 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 blah, blah right enough of that that's you, you'll get the gist of that right so that's the report there the little report uh, jump forwards to march 2010 so that was that was 1999 so 10 years later just about and um 10 years later and March 2010, and we get this document. The uh, this is the command paper, the the high speed rail strategy command paper, which Adonis kind of half penned, and it was penned by the DFT. This is what gave us HS2 um, in terms of the infrastructure. HS2 Limited had already been created in 2009, but but um, March 2010 is when we got HS2, and within that document, which we're going to open, uh, see, see, I'm doing this. This is the this is the national strategy. Here we are. There's the national strategy. High speed rail, da 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 da. Uh, G Brown's face is about to appear. Here's G Brown with his marker pen, and here's Andrew Donis looking decidedly eighties. Uh, yeah, quite the quite the look, um, Andrew. Anyway, um, so this is the discussion. This is basically what said, "Oh, we're going to do high speed rail, uh, national strategy for high speed rail." I mean, it was anything but a national strategy. It started out a bit national strategy ish, but it very rapidly was not that, and it did get undermined uh, by the change of government. It must be said. So the discussion of 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 sort of uh, step changes in transport capacity, uh, da, 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 new capacity, improved connectivity, blah, 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 all this stuff. Uh, the link, uh, da, 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 and there is, I have to find, find the actual page. Oh, anyway, basically, there is a section in here which talks about the link between HS2 and HS1. So we jump forward to the first stage of the design. So only about, th you know, three and a half, uh, sorry, two and a half years later, we start getting formal designs for HS2 appearing. Now, why is it? Why is why is why have I brought these up? Well, it's because um, uh, Brown was still PM in uh, 2010. Uh, he was right up until the point where that. Well, that was what was that? That was March 2010. So when was the general election? May, presumably. So uh, it very much kicked out just before he uh, got booed. You could argue it was electioneering, but um, I mean they were working on it anyway. So 2013, we have the first plans. Now, why have I brought these up? Well, I brought these up because we get to look at. The, uh, we can see what the link looks like at this point. So you can see here, this is the HS, This is what the first HS2, the formal HS2, HS1 link looked like because it did form part of the original plans. So you can see here that there's three, so if I go up here, there's three tunnels. I, I know it's not hugely obvious and clear, but you can should just about be able to pick them out, right? If you've got this up on HD, if you've got it on your phone, this might be a bit trickier. You can see by this point, I, I'm not going to show the next page along because it's not so, basically this, this connects right, but almost all the way to Old Oak Common before it sort of splits out. So you've got these three tunnels, the middle one being the, the this then drops down. You can see, um, actually it doesn't drop down, it, dro it, it lifts up. So this is the vertical alignment down here. Uh, there's the vertical alignment. So this is the horizontal alignment. Uh, there's the horizontal. This is the vertical. Uh, you can see that the that the link is climbing upwards, whereas the the HS2 tunnels, the through tunnels, are still kind of continuing on their lower path. And then it climbs up over the top here, um, and then connects up onto. There we are. There's a relocated um, network rail substation there, and it reconnects and it connects up basically onto the. I think it's like on, onto the North London line basically, um, and then as it keeps going. Uh, actually, this is the other direction. I should have swapped these two around, really. Um, you can actually see... So I do actually have the link. You can see that this the three tunnels run concurrently. Uh, these three tunnels are running concurrently for quite a lot of their length, uh, presumably for timetabling reasons. So it gives you a bit of space to, to run things off and on without getting in the way of the service. So there's quite a lot of extra... You know, it's a third board tunnel underneath London. Um, it's not aban It's not particularly abandoned that bit of track. You know, these these the North London. All these lines are pretty well used. Actually, you know what? I can bring up. I can show you kind of how it connected up to the. Uh, let's see if I can do that. I, I can show you how it connected up to the uh, Euston approach. Th one, three, three. Do I want three? Uh, no, I don't want that. I want. Oh, maybe I want this one here. Uh, yeah. Nope, not that one. This one here. These these are all the drawings. It's not hugely exciting. So so you can see it coming off, 
Um, yeah, you can see it kind of coming off the, uh, running through here, a uh, bit of a re widening of the Kentish Town Viaduct, uh, then running on Camden, Camden Road Station. It's just the Camden High Line that it's basically running through. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, and then it kind of comes off using the existing lines. Is that a single lead there? Ooh, anyway. And then it connects in, and then it connects into the into to HS into HS one into the, the first part of the London Tunnel. So, so there you go. So that's kind of an idea of what the link actually looked like. And that is, um, that's basically what that that was what the link looked like. Press that button. That was the link. That was the that was the HS two link, right? Uh, and so I'm bouncing between windows here, so I want to make sure that everything is here. Something, something, Camden Road International. Yeah, John, that would, that would be John Christoph. Yes, that would be quite a lot of fun. Oh. Actually, Dave, sorry, I didn't realize you're here. Um, they've got one of the wrong road villages. In the... Dave, uh, Dave, how do I pronounce your name, David? Uh, correct me if I've pronounced it wrong. Is it Pilo? Anyway, um, uh, John, C., uh, John Stone, London Cycle Routes, is pointing out, yes, it's the High Line, an idiotic project. Yes, the High Line is an idiotic project, using up a piece of quite valuable railway asset. Um, anyway, right, so... Oh, enough of this. So, right. So that's the plan. So, so we kind of look through the plan there. You can see, you can see uh, the frequency of ventilation shaft here, by the way. You know, you've got a ventilate. Where's my mask on? You've got, I'm going to scribble. There we are. Oh, that was all right. Yeah. You've got a ventilation shaft here and then another ventilation shaft over here. You can see them there. A bit of nice sort of green space here being added. Anyway. So we're jumping forwards. Uh, Pilo. Pilo. Thanks, Dave. Uh, David, thank you very much indeed. Uh, strongly recommend going and finding it. I'm going to cite you uh, shortly. HS1, HS2 link would be worth it just to kill off the high line, says Leo. Um, yeah, that's uh, not an unreasonable statement. <laughs> so, uh, 17th of March 2014, we're jumping forwards and enter David Higgins, the new boss of HS2, who creates a new version of HS2 called HS2 Plus, or HS2 Plus, if, uh, if you so please. And um, this is a new shiny report, which we're going to open again. Hooray! There we are, wait for it. Because, what does it say? What does this report say? Because it's worth diving in and having a look the higgins plus report in fact we're going to look at his slides uh remember my choice for this document i know i don't want it to go full screen although actually i do want it to go full screen so here's david higgins you remember david higgins there he is um we're going to skip forwards context you know, passenger growth lovely uh lovely 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 lots of waffle waffle uh, i wonder if it mentions release capacity methinks not so much uh yeah uh, lots of stuff talking about the north and blah 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 and uh, yeah, yeah here we are here's the hs1 hs2 link this is the important bit that we're interested in um so it's saying these improvements it's referring to the other stuff um deliver more benefits to people da, 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 x improvements in my view are a bigger priority and will deliver more benefits to more people across the country than the proposed hs1 hs2 link it is the most cost effective solution for linking the two networks but it is an imperfect compromise because of the effect it would have on existing passenger and freight services and the local community it would also use up hs2 capacity that could be better used on services to more areas such as north wales the hs2 platforms at euston will be a short distance from those at hs1 and blah blah blah, blah. so basically Oh, and also, I believe the government should therefore consider whether the cost at around 700 million is good value or whether it would be better to consider an alternative which would deliver the benefits of a link without compromising the existing services. So there you go. At which point, uh, so March 2014, the link is dead. It's gone. So by January 2015, uh, let's have a look at our slides. You remember this? We just looked at this drawing. This is the drawing from uh, 2013. So we're two years later, or less than two years later. Actually, it's about a year and a bit later because it's October to January. So only a year later. And uh, pop, it's disappeared. See, there we are. I'm going to flip back and forth a bit. Um, and it's gone. The link has evaporated. And if you skip down to this bit, you see this section, you can see that now the, uh, the two tunnels are quite a distance apart from each other. You see the, the tunnels are a distance apart, but they've just essentially gone, they've just essentially selected those CAD elements and deleted them. The link is gone. It is gone. Uh, there's a there's, there's a blues song there. B.B. Uh, B. King sang something about the link is gone, didn't he? Uh, so, that's it. It's gone. Uh, at that point, it has been kaputskined. And then by November 2015, uh, weirdly, HS2 then sort of did a bit of analysis and sort of discussed it and sort of back justified. the, the, the So there was the position paper... And then essentially then HS2 backfilled that with analysis to justify the removal of it. So November 2015, uh, yeah, November 2015, and, and this report appears. And I'll get, oh yeah, I forgot to put the Higgins slides up. These are the Higgins slides. Uh, anything useful? The, it's Higgin, the Higgins report, by the way, that the HS2 Plus is where Phase 2A was invented. Uh, this is, sorry, this isn't the, the report I was just talking about. I thought I just, oh yeah, the HS1, HS2 link, there it is. Uh, three trains an hour, proposals, operational limitations, 
uh, impacts these things. Deletion reduces phase one forecast by 700 million. Recommend a study to consider alternative connectivity. So to be fair, this is then, they recommend the study and then the study is what I'm about to uh, close all these and then reopen this. This is the 2015, 11, there the November 2015 report. Here it is. And, you know, and it's, it's kind of looking at the options. So you can see the baseline comparator, blah, 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 and looking at, and it's worth having a look at these reports to kind of get, get, get an idea, get an updated idea of what is and is not um, working. Uh, you can see there, there's the, there's the thing coming through and this, this yeah, yeah, lovely, um, explaining what's going on and the conclusions. And then, the, so that's the summary of the conclusions, I think. Yeah, that's the, the recommendations. So let's flick through and you can see, blah, 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 blah. I mean, yeah, lots of, yeah. Uh, Houston has changed a bit since then. So there's this costings, which are worth having a look through. And there's like an explanation of sort of the different links that exist, uh, kind of different options that there are, uh, blah, 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 blah. What's quite interesting is this table here, where you can sort of see a comparison between the different options, sort of different rail options, um, elevated walkways, use of cross rail state two stations, a walking route, which is sort of what we've got now ish plus the advanced level walking. So, um, so we've got these things going on. Um, I don't worry, I'm going to stop for questions in a minute. And then there's some sort of, well, they've, they've, they're, I don't know, what the praise or something, or quantified, okay, they've, they've quantified the numbers here. So that's even more useful. This table's probably the useful. And this figure five is the one you want to look at. And, and so obviously they put big red things on things that cost money because, mm, um, blah, 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 blah. But, so this report, okay, all fine and good, all fine and good. And you've got all that stuff, and, and there's a huge amount of analysis, yada yada. However, I do want what I do want to do is um, is open this image in a new tab, and do this, and do this because Dave, oh, uh, and F11, there we are, because D Dave, there we are, Dave Pilo has pointed out, um, actually did this, did this kind of, in fact, might be, we might well be discussing this with us, and there's lots of red. We're going to go through all the all the questions in a moment. I'm going to get my large face back up. So. David did a freedom of information request um, asking what data had been used to determine um, whether it was a good idea or a bad idea to, in fact, there's a report cited. So there's a report cited within that HS2, HS1 connectivity thing. So this, 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 the, the thing we just looked at, that fairly detailed looking um, study, there are several mentions of previous work by HS2 Limited published in December 13 and March 2014. See included screenshots. There's some screenshots. Uh, David had searched in the HS2 document archive and cannot find any document from those months that would match the description of a source for these figures. Could you therefore clarify which documents these sources refer to and provide them or direct me to where they're available online? Unfortunately, all the staff involved in producing the report you mentioned and therefore possibly knowing where the data you request was sourced are no longer working at HS2 Limited. <laughs> As a consequence, we do not know whether this information was ever recorded on HS2 limited systems, and if it was, we cannot identify where this information may be held. So essentially, the, the, the kind of the numbers and the premise behind making the decision that it's a bad idea to have that connection are mm, dubious at best and based on a report that doesn't exist anymore. So, hmm, uh, yes. Now... <laughs> We're going to talk momentarily about why uh, actually the link as it stood was rubbish. And it's probably a good thing that it isn't being built. But the fundamental idea of there being a connection, in fact, all of those links that we put on that PDF, all of all of these links, all the kind of different options they put up, where are they all? Uh, they're all the way up at the top. Oh, golly. Uh, there's a picture, wasn't there? Where, where is it? This, this one here. All of these are rubbish. Uh, let's see. All of them. All of these options are dreadful. Absolutely all of them are rubbish, right? Every single one. Hopeless. And we'll get to why momentarily. Um, so, in fact, we're not going to get to why momentarily. We're going to get to why in a second. But first, we're going to do big face and answer some questions again. Oh, because there are so many red my names appearing in the chat. So let me scroll up. Uh, there we are. Da, 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 da. Uh, right. Lovely. Lovely. Yes. Here we go. Oh, golly. Highline idiotic project. Stop the highline. Yes, good. Okay, right. Here we are. Uh, David, I hope I've represented your investigations well there, but I'm glad you tweeted me that earlier because it's very interesting indeed. Um, 
Would have made Stratford International less of a white elephant? Possibly, yeah. Um, would a tunnel solution be better? We'll get there, HST trains. Richard Smith, out of context, lots of stuff about the North, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, absolutely. The, no the North, generically, is always used as an excuse to sort of make bad decisions. And, and usually, invariably, they are ultimately... It's like, we're not going to build a connection to the North. The rest of, you know, we're not going to improve connectivity between the, uh, the North and the rest of Europe because that'll be bad for the North. What we're going to do is pretend we're going to do something about local connectivity and then cancel that. Yeah, that's the, the normal story. Uh, Richard Smith says, show me a person who's never travelled by train from the rest of the UK to the continent. Uh, Richard Smith also says, is there still any passive provision for this in today's plan, at least in terms of the H2 end? None. Gone. No passive provision whatsoever. Entirely removed. There is no passive provision whatsoever for it. Um, John Christopher saying, this is exactly what I mean when we say de-scoped. Yeah. Uh, thriller's gone. No, no, he says he says the link has gone. Um, still passive provision for later construction. Sakura, I don't think there is. There's not a, there is no passive provision at all. Okay, there's the space for you to bore, but there is no passive provision for those uh, connections. There's no passive provision for the connection. Um, uh, right, okay, lovely. Da, 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 da. So, right, 700 million is pennies. Absolutely, it is. Uh, oh, golly, lots of extra questions just appeared. Um, <laughs> so, uh, da, 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 the key point is the government didn't want the link. Yeah, they absolutely didn't want the link. It's expensive and complicated and would mean they'd have to deal with the logistics of using the channel tunnel properly. Uh, it would, yeah, it, it, there are a lot of people lobbying hard for the Channel Tunnel to be not as good as it is because the airlines continue to want to have their monopoly over um, over regional connections to Europe. They don't have the monopoly over the connection from London to across to, to Paris, certainly, but they do have the, the monopoly over largely over connecting you know Manchester, Birmingham across. Um, uh, yes, uh, North of London services terminating at Stratford was, was one of the reasons for this. Quite possibly, uh, I, I slurred, I kind of... Uh, slurred a bit there didn't i i'm kind of uh, slurring our text maybe i need a drink of water keep asking your questions uh, there's so many uh something about michael heseltine richard smith is saying quite possibly uh what else have we got uh small brain just walk between euston and st pancras big brain build a travelator giant brain hs1 hs2 link galaxy brain change trains at london Hauptbahnhof. we're getting there john stone <laughs> um schengen is an issue but schengen is not a lot you know schengen I'm in two minds about it. Like, it's a logistic... Sure, it's a, it's a challenge. But it's not an insurmountable challenge. It's not beyond the wit of man to sort that. So, yes, there are obviously political and uh, customs reasons for that being a challenge. You know, things like the fact that you'd have to... If you had a regional service, you'd theoretically have to build all those customs provisions at all the other stations elsewhere, which obviously is a, not ideal. So this does make things easier. But is that really a good enough excuse when that happens across the rest of Europe? I don't think it is. It might be a reason. It might be a current excuse, but it is just that it's an excuse. It's not a reason. It's not a justified reason. Um, Master Trams, that's a question. I'm afraid I can tackle on the Discord and, and at me in, uh, and I might be able to if you're writing your dis dissertation. But I don't think I can cover that here. That's a long, that's a long answer to that question. Um, Richard Smith says, to be fair, I'm not surprised. Their computer folder structure is an absolute mess, and they lost the. And essentially, he's saying they lost the PDF. Uh, yes. Uh, oh golly, stop bouncing around YouTube. Chill out. Oh, thoughts on HS4 Air? Oh, that's another old episode, I think. Uh, does the fact the tunnels are space to allow a link tunnel mean we could fit one in later and come, if we come up with a better design? Uh, possibly, but as I'm about to explain, anything coming from the north is a bad design. Uh, yes. Uh, Eddie Owen. Oh, so many apps. This is it's all happening. I might have to pause and pick them up in a bit. If there was a link to be built with the with a southeast London, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, I'm going to skip over things. Talk about what would be a good idea. Um, oh, so many are appearing. Uh, would you be able to bore in such close proximity to now running lines? Uh, the now running lines and the other tunnels. Uh, I think you could. Yeah, you could do that. It would be a bit of a pain, but I reckon you could. It's a mistake to remove passive vision. It is, but that's uh, sale of. Well, I don't know if it is because a northern connection is useless, as I'm about to explain. Oh, should I, should there be more cross-channel rail freight? Absolutely, there should. Yeah. Um, uh, should the UK government reinvest in partnership with Eurostar to show commitment to modal shift? Absolutely, they should. Yeah. Um, but they're going to do that. Uh, am I going to do a rail natter on my recent trip? I'm going to do a rail natter on part of it. I've recorded stuff for a rail natter on Belgrade Bar, but I'm not sure I'm going to do one on the whole thing. I can maybe talk about it a bit. I mean, I could talk about it if you like. Just make the suggestions in the Discord uh, for that. Oh, is there room for border controls at HS2 stations? No. Uh, uh, John Stone is pointing out the lack of Schengen also limits scope for intermediate domestic passengers so limits commercial viability like, yes it does under current structure but I suppose the, and, and that's kind of why I think that's part of the momentum for this this kind of you know politically the momentum is against any sort of freeing up of, of, of borders between uh, Britain and the rest of Europe 
but long term if we had a more you know we, we, what should it look like long term that's possibly what we're going to talk about but um as i'm about to explain all of the current proposals all of the proposals we just looked at were bad they were rubbish um schengen da 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 uh, single market economy to join the euro. Actually, I've increasingly decided that joining the euro is a bad idea as I've learned more about economics. Uh, in fact, increasingly deciding that the eurozone is a bad idea. But uh, maybe that's one for the future. I think as I've become as HS reading as responding to HS two and antes has made me more having to become more of an amateur economist. Uh, I'm realizing that the euro is a bad idea, not a good idea. But anyway, particularly now as we don't use cash anymore and it's kind of pointless to have one single currency. Anyway, right, that's definitely one for another discussion. Oh uh, yes, Ed Fielding's pointing out you'd have cross. There are cross passages between the uh, the two tunnels, so you'd have to demolish all those as you board through it. So it's kind of pretty much a non-starter. Um, Gareth Williams asks, why do we need border controls at stations? Uh, yeah, because Schengen. Until we join Schengen, and there's no, you know, politically, it's not happening anytime soon, is it? Um, so right, oh, that I've caught up. So let's crack on, shall we? Because we've still got a bit to do, and it's 1947. Oh. Small face again. Why were the link proposals bad? Uh, why indeed? Well, firstly, let's get this up, which is uh, someone's done a very nice sketch of what all the different HS2 proposals look like. Uh, sorry, HS2 services will look like. And uh, and this is going to kind of make my point very, ni- ni- very nicely for me, which is any connection to uh, coming in and connection from HS2 uh, in fact, let's sketch it. So, any if if you can imagine, you've got you've got HS two coming down like this uh, into into Euston. There's Euston. Let's just draw a box for Euston. And if you've got HS one link coming this way, any anything that does that is bad. Um, why why is it bad? Ah, sorry, I should say. Uh, I don't. I, in fact, let's get rid of that. So we've got bearing in mind the current look, it looked like this, and then we have Euston here. There's Euston, uh, US. And then the current plan was for this to be the link, right? That was the, the HS, uh, HS1, HS2 link to do that. Which means that any service that go, wants to go on, any service kind of coming on and wanting to go off to, to, the, to the European mainland has to skip. It's skipping the central London station, right? So it's going via Old Oak Common uh, over here, right? But it's skipping. So you've got Old Oak Common there, lovely. But it's skipping, uh, and then it's going off to the, to the, ch- the channel that way, right? Uh, HS1, uh, HS1, HS2, and then the link there. There's the link. So doing that, it's skipping the central London station. So that means that you're a sac- of, of the 18-ish, uh, the aspirational and, cur- and and pretty much confirmed is not possible now because they've pretty much definitely limited use into 10 platforms, So which is like a massive sort of moment. But anyway... Uh, they're doing that because they're going to dance. They're going to descope the eastern leg. You know, this is the successive series of failures. So, by saying that they've by by raising all the doing all the kite flying for like we're going to all the eastern leg is going to be cancelled. What they're going to do is make everyone glad that a a descoped existing network upgrade that they will call the eastern leg is is a not a cancellation. That's what they're buttering everyone up for, and we should reject it wholesale. Uh, I didn't actually drink the water, did I? Hmm. There we go. So, why have they not put the... Uh, oh, the, the, there's some logistics com- uh, s- discussions here. Right, so, in fact, I need to change colour of pen uh, before I start John Maddening a bit more. Let's do my pointer options and change the colour to blue. There we are. So that's the current proposals. Um, so the issue with that is that for every... So you have to pick... So, so if there's going to be three trains an hour... Uh, I don't know if that was in both directions or just in one direction. How many of these services are you then scratching the the London the central London connection for, right? How many? Because for every t- time you do that, you're diminishing the the usefulness of that service, which means people might not catch it, which means they can't hop onto another train, or you're diminishing the potential release capacity benefits on the existing railway network. If that means that you aren't justifying, uh, you're not run, if you've not got enough capacity to stop the service, you know, to move those uh, non long distance non stop services off, for example, the East Coast Main Line. So this is bad. So then the other option is, right, okay, well, do do the link this way then. So different design. None of the proposals looked at this. But actually, you do the link this way, and they run in here, and then they reverse, and then they come back out. So they, they come in, they come in, and then they reverse, and then they come back out. Hooray. Well, the issue with that is that that would mean that you're clogging up, you're doubly clogging up the station throat at Euston, which would have pretty much the same effect. You'd be reducing capacity. You wouldn't manage the 18 trains per hour. So that would be canned off. And once again, you're diminishing the capacity of HS2. So 
any of this any of the solutions that involve a terminal so any anything that involves a terminal Houston um, and a connection from the north is bad. It will it can't work. It can't work operationally, right? Is everyone following this? Does it all make sense? Comment at, throw ads at me right now if it doesn't make sense. Um uh, John Christon makes a very good point. Given Houston's 10 platforms are now the constraint on trains per hour, why wouldn't you want to find some other place for more trains to go to maximize throughput on HS2 itself? Because if you don't have a central London terminus of some kind, the benefit isn't there because the whole point is that you're replacing the existing network London-bound services. And if you aren't replacing them, then that means those services will continue to run on the existing network, which will diminish your release capacity benefits, which will undermine the fundamental need for HS2 in the first place. Which then raises the kind of question. Uh, oh, by the way, let's let's actually have a look at what this looks like in practice. I got Google Earth up. There we are. Weirdly, my Google Earth has what the original link looked like. Look, still, my Google Earth center lines are clearly very old because they have that link there. Look, look at it go. Uh, and there's the link whizzing off, connecting up, uh, going through Camden, which is just bonkers. Like you know, it, it was weird enough seeing Eurostar trains going through like East Dulwich or wherever it was that they used to go through. But anyway, uh, and then it connects up, and then hey presto, you go through the into the magic magic portal and disappear off towards Stratford International. Um, so this kind of begs the question, then what is a good idea, right? What What is a good idea for, um, you know, what might a better proposal look like? Oh, everyone's asking about London Hauptbahnhof. We're getting there within literally a slide. You'll be very pleased to know. I'm bubbling with excitement to share this element with you. Um, oh, so many ads. I, I can hardly keep up with... Uh, I can hardly... Everyone's starting to flail around their crayons around. Um, people are saying this makes sense. People are saying reverse them into pancreas. Uh, Central London, stop, not terminus. Yep, there we are. Da, 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 da. Um, oh, wouldn't the demand, why, why wouldn't the demand from Stratford and Kent uh, and Europe be at least similar to Houston for limited... There are lots of, there are lots of questions. I, and um, um, yeah, reversing a plan... Uh, so basically, uh, Houston Station is designed very optimally, as William Barter can attest to, for the 18 trains per hour um, running uh, running in and running out, you can reverse... Okay, station throw... Reversing is not a calamity necessarily if you've designed your station throw properly, okay? Um, and indeed, in the case of the current Houston design, which might well be getting horribly de-scoped by morons, um, that means that there, there's a throat which connects and there's a bit of a flyover. I was trying to find the 3D... I've got a 3D... I'll maybe post the link later on the discord or something it's on twitter there's a 3d alignment that i've got that shows the the lines crossing over to allow deconfliction as the speeds are increasing so at lower speeds they can cross over it's not so bad on the flat as the speeds are increasing you kind of want to deconflict so there's a bit of a flyover and then things end up in the right place so um are people are being pedantic. Joseph Thomas is being pedantic about the uh, title. My titles are always a bit of a, a bit of a bodge. They're kind of a, a play, often a play on words. So, what might a better proposal look like? Well, let's look to the past uh, because, and I'm going to use some Foster and Partner slides. Here is a picture from the olden days, uh, and here you can see uh, here's the old uh, Concorde. Oh, it's red, blue. That's no good. Let's change it back to red, shall we? Um, do, 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 back to red. Here is the old concourse uh, of King's Cross that was temporary and was very much not untemporary. Here's where the new t kind of umbrella thing is. And here's a load of things that are now turned into, you know, more developmenty stuff and many shiny developments. Um, and this is pretty much what was originally going to be used to pay for the new connecting station here, as well as paying for the rest of the Channel Tunnel Rail Link. Um, it was all this oversight development. Now, oversight development, which is a curse that Houston is currently having to deal with anyway, uh, although Lend-Lease are pissed off with the, the, latest, um, the latest announcement from government because it's diminished the amount that they can do overly. But abolish Lend-Lease. You suck, Lend-Lease. I hate you. Anyway, I don't hate. Well, I don't hate is a strong word, but I, I do think Lend-Lease is stupid and I want Lend-Lease to collapse and not exist because they drive oversight development and make our stations pants. But on that subject, if you're going to do the right solution is press button. No. What? Uh, oh, wait a minute. I've got slides in the wrong order. Bear with me a second. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that should be uh, that should be there. There we are. I fixed it. Right, good. Have I managed to do that? That's exciting. Sorry, we're jumping to... <laughs> you know how these things go. Uh, let me get OBS back up so I know what's going on. Right, we're jumping to the 23rd of July, 1987, because... 
all the things I was just explaining, the Channel Tunnel Act 1987, which enacted construction of the, of the Channel Tunnel, um, involved lots of silly ideas about private finance, which resulted in British Rail having to use all this oversight development to fund the Channel Tunnel Rail Link, which was not allowed to be funded by state funds, stupidly, because, you know, Thatcherism and neoliberalism and nonsense economics, um, which resulted in these proposals with this thing here, this funny f classic Norman Foster weirdo tent here, uh, this thing, plus all this oversight development that kind of obviously looks quite different now, and they demolished a lot more than I'm, I'm glad to say they repurposed rather than demolishing. If you remember all those buildings that still exist, thankfully, as part of the, the kind of coal drops development, they were all being demolished as part of um, the Foster and Partner plans. So, uh, so th these, and what is this? So here is King's Cross, there's King's Cross. Here is St Pancras, there's St Pancras. And here is the Triangle of Destiny, which is this. Uh, here is, these are the three slides from the, from which I'm going to show more pictures of, of kind of explaining. But this kind of shows what the arrangement is that I'm talking about. Because what we have is, we've got, uh, there's the East Coast Main Line. There's the East Coast Main Line uh, with my terrible handwriting. Here is the Midland Main Line. And here is uh, going in two different directions. We have um, we have Europe uh, going in this way. So there's the the, the Europe uh, and the and the Channel Tunnel. Uh, and in this direction, I don't know why I did the arrow that way. In this direction, we have the rest of Britain. It's this way. Uh, deliberate spelling mistake. There's Britain that way. Basically, an enabler for a through connection northwards. The station for the Channel Tunnel was going to be a through station. These were the original plans for the connection, the Channel Tunnel Railing. The original plans were for a through station here. This is what the this is what it should have always blinking well looked like. <sighs> There's an excellent description. Uh, Londonist has got a piece on this, by the way. I strongly recommend going and reading. You can just search King's Cross High Speed Londonist and it'll appear. So um, go and find that. So uh, here's a very pixely picture with, with, with people in it showing kind of again what this thing would look like there's this sort of tenting thing and um, but anyway sorry look at this so so you can see also notice by the way this would include this would have included um thameslink services that might have made use of the through station so the low level station here low level station this wasn't just for international services but it was also for thameslink 2000 because you can see network southeast bridges um so there's this kind of enabler to connect up to to king's cross for the uh, so for those Thameslink services, uh, you've got the ticket hall here, and there's the St Pancras platform, and, and you can see this is the international arrivals and departures bit. So there's it's kind of so this side actually is the is the international side, and then there's a bit of NNC side uh, kind of here and here. So that kind of all makes some sense. Um, John Christoph, yes, it is very good, isn't it? Um, so in terms of Leo asking about Thameslink, there's the answer. Uh, it would have looked very different. So you wouldn't have had, you know, the, the Thameslink tunnels currently carved. I've got a Twitter thread about the tunnels, and maybe I'll do an episode of it. The, the, the current canal tunnels that kind of do that uh, wouldn't have existed. They didn't need to exist because this was the current, that was, that this this included those as well as the as through platforms for, for international services. It makes sense. So here are some nice high-resolution pictures of what that would have looked like. Uh, that seem to exclude the rest of Britain, but anyway, or the rest of London. But you can sort of see this is the classic Foster's high tech thing. Um, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of high tech architecture, to be honest. I think it's a bit stupid. Um, but it's you know it's not glass enough and it sort of shows things. They'd have demolished quite a lot of. So the, the issue with this is that they'd have demolished quite a lot of London to this part of London to build it, including some very nice buildings. Um, we might have done it slightly differently nowadays without quite as much demolition, but in the late 80s, early 90s, we were a bit, a bit more gung-ho on such things. Um, here's a nice picture from above. It's kind of showing how it fits. So it would have involved quite a lot of demolition in this direction here, this, this proposal. But the idea is that you have the light coming down into the station concourse here with the, um, with the through platforms underneath. It would become a Hauptbahnhof. It would indeed become what you've all been suggesting and saying is a good idea. Um... Uh, Donald Brown again, and lots of people... Okay, everyone needs to stop saying you'd have to um, segregate international domestic passengers. They don't do that in uh, in Europe, uh, on the mainland. So why, if we're thinking long-term aspiration, would we would we not be doing... You know, why is that an issue in the UK? I'm talking about long-term future aspirations. Um, at, this t at this point, the aspirations were that there would be... That this would all kind of work out in the wash. That the Schengen would kind of maybe be a, an inevitability. We were getting close to... The idea, bearing in mind there's a lot of Eurosceptics in government at the time, there was still the idea that there was closer union and this would kind of work. But um, but now, uh, I, I'm sorry, I, for future plans, I'd, 
I'm, I'm assuming that we've got rid of this idea that Britain needs to have somehow be kind of split and separate and away from the rest of Europe uh, in terms of borders. So uh, yes, I don't care for the uh, I, I don't care for the idea, and it's a bad excuse. As I say, it's an excuse, not a reason. Lack of customs facilities is an excuse, not a reason. Um, we don't need to have customs facilities. Uh, I mean, we do now because Brexit and blah blah blah. But in terms of long term, those that they were planning for the future, the future what I want, we wouldn't care about customs facilities. We'd just you know do Schengen. So now, right. So Trevor Stone had took some pictures of a model because they made it. This is the, the CGI by the look of it. But they also made oh, actually is it? Oh, maybe this is actual. Maybe this is the same model. Maybe I don't know. It's hard to exactly tell. They also made a. Um, they made an actual real physical model, uh, a really nice physical model with lots of layers and all sorts explaining how everything fits together, um, which was in the BR offices, I think, or was it, or maybe it was in the offices, I think it was it was somewhere anyway, Trevor Stone took these pictures, and um, and he took these pictures of the model, and I think it's really nice to just look at the model, not least is there's some nice, uh, there's some nice classic TGVs in there. Uh, with their terrible interiors, as I recently found out. Um, and you can sort of see how much demolition was going on to build this thing, because they were talking about this being kind of cut and cover ex construction. So everywhere that's underneath this thing was, was massive excavation, right? So uh, I'm just making sure my head's not in the way of the images. It's not at this point. So there's one picture, which is really nice. You can sort of see there um, how that how it cuts through. This is King's Cross here. So you can see how it cuts through King's Cross. So I presume, at this point, I presume it would be kind of very careful excavation to not. But here, at this point over here, it was um, it was kind of cut and then and then, and then cover. Uh, again, here we've got uh, more pictures showing where kind of more of the work, more of the demolitions that are required to make it work. Uh, what else we got? Uh, we've got uh, yeah, there's King's Cross again and showing how it cuts through underneath, and also some of the connections in terms of concourse, concourse here, and then the, this is the the connections for the for the Thameslink services. There actually is that model. Is there a model? Yeah, you can sort of possibly see what model here of the like what the Thameslink connect. You know, Thameslink platforms might have been. You can see some nice uh, class ninety ones. Oh, actually, they're DVTs there, but anyway, uh, looking very nice too. Um, there's even a little HST. Look at that. And then platforms down into the station. There's some Pancras, very familiar, lovely. Um, so there's some P. Uh, looking very nice, very nice model. Is that, is that sitting on the table with the, the kind of the other bits underneath the top of the model? There, yeah, there's the King's Cross bit of the model from earlier that's clearly been taken off and put on the floor. <laughs> uh, interesting. It's interesting stuff. I love this. Um, and here's a nice picture of, of St. P as well, uh, looking big. <laughs> it is very grand. Uh, now, this man here. Uh, this person is uh, is one of the people singularly uh, responsible. For, well, he's not really. He lobbied Corbs here. Lobbied. Uh, oh yeah, audio only. This is a picture of Jeremy Corbyn with a beard like I have and floppy hair like I have. Um, he uh, he lobbied very hard against this because it caused it was causing a lot of damage in uh, his constituency. And, uh, and to be fair, the plans were a pretty blunt instrument. Like they could have been fettled quite a lot and avoided a lot of the damage locally. So to be honest, I, I think it's, it's I can understand the opposition just as I can kind of understand people opposing it in in you know, po opposing HS2 in Camden for similar reasons. Although you can see by the difference in scale, it's less of a blunt instrument. Although they are demolishing quite a lot. So yeah. Anyway, I defer. But anyway, so um, Michael C is saying weren't the platforms not actually long enough for the Eurostar trains? There are discussions about that. I don't know to what extent that's that's true. There's a bit of an urban legend about the fact that BR didn't actually design the station to be quite long enough for 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 the Eurostar trains. Yeah, that's the sort of thing that comes out in the wash in detailed design, right? So, oh, there's so much chat going on. I've entirely fallen behind on. Um, at me for new questions. I'll try and catch up. So, oh. Um, and actually, really, it wasn't necessarily Corbyn, because by March 1992, this had all gone. Why? Um, because, uh, well, chiefly, the main reason is the is the early 90s recession, because it um, bludgeoned uh, Olympia and York, or is it York and Olympia, uh, on the back of the head. Uh, they went bust, and they, who were the original owners of Canary Wharf, um, they were going to be the major investors for... Uh, for all that new asset that was going to, all the new oversight development, all the new construction that was going to happen in the railway to kind of land north of King's Cross, the redevelopment at the time, um, was going to be done by Olympia New York. They went bust as a result of the early 90s uh, recession. And that kind of meant that the oversight development thing fell through, which meant that the funding for that whole project collapsed. 
and also the interest in regional Eurostar had collapsed by that point. You know, it was already starting to tumble. Um, oh, sorry, the, the regional Eurostar thing hadn't collapsed by that point. The government were still talking about it as being a real thing, but I think behind closed doors that had already been un- was already being undermined by cheap flights. What time is it? Oh, it's five past eight already. I'm so sorry, everyone. So, um, there you go. So by March 1992, it was gone. It was Kaputsky. Uh, that was the end of that. And so that is kind of, to be honest, what the ideal... Uh, that's the, what the ideal kind of uh, through station would have looked like. It would have looked like those plans. Those original plans were the best ones, um, although fettled, uh, I dare say. Oh, so, will there ever be a direct link to the European mainland? Well, this is kind of where it gets a bit a bit open, it right? Uh, so I'm going to go back to Big Face again to answer this one, really. Um, so, uh, right, let's go through and answer some questions, right? Oh, my goodness, there are so many questions. Uh, uh send me more questions if i miss them and i'll try and catch up if i could go back in time and provide foresight of the future how would you change london's stations layout oh that's such a, oh man that's a huge question uh i wouldn't necessarily that's too bad <laughs> i'd still go for how i'd go for help van Hof, but that would have involved lots of central london demolition and we wouldn't have got the tube network in the way it is it's such a complicated counterfactual that i, I wouldn't know where to start uh it's an interesting question though dave bumstead uh this was actually planned but never got any further correct uh, yes, Michael C., am I right in thinking the platform? Oh, yeah, we've done that one already. Sorry, Michael. Repeating the question you mentioned later. Uh, Donald, a train from the North Park. Oh, yeah, we've done that as well, right? Okay, so I've, I've caught up a bit. Oh, oh. Joseph Thomas, uh, is a high speed link between Old Oak Common and Stratford International justified by domestic travel before we get into mess of segregate international and domestic? Um, that's a tricky question. Uh, pass. Pass. I need to look at the, the the passenger flows, but also a lot of the a lot of the modelling of passenger flows is really not aspirational. We're not looking at, you know, we're not looking at road traffic flows. We're not looking at the actual. We're not looking so much at people flows uh, as we're looking at just oh, what's the market like? It's like, well, no. What what do we want to achieve? What's the connectivity we actually want to achieve between the UK and and the rest of Europe? Uh, and it kind of ties into the Northern Irish link as well. It's like that's one of the okay. So the rail and and ferry the connections and public transport connections might be you know the market might be small but as we've established uh, as we established in that episode it's one of the busiest flight corridors if not the busiest flight corridor in europe so that does mean there is a market and it's a market that we should obliterate in t- flight wise uh anyway oh uh, john christoph is saying that's uh, uh john christoph's it's john christoph's personal model railroading dream project yeah can can confirm it's uh it's awesome uh there we go let's go through that um Maybe some IC250 based trains could have been used. Well, indeed. Lots of people talk about uh, the IC250. I, would, I don't know anything about that project. But, well, that's not true. I know quite a bit about it. But um, uh, it would be interesting for a rail matter to explore it. Uh, that would be particularly interesting. So, okay, right. Gregor is saying... Oh, uh, was saying something, and then my, it's skipped around. Uh, the, the live chat jitters a lot, so that's why I'm a bit chonky on keeping up with it, because it keeps bouncing around. Even with the need for customers having domestic and international services, stopping at the same station with a connecting walkway seems useful. Yeah, agreed. Uh, boop, 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 boop. uh okay people are saying that i am uh corbin that's strange no we're not the same person very much um you won't see me at quite as many obviously bad move shifty and, and basically borderline anti-semitic events as, as corbs managed to be at even though give or take whether he was an anti semite himself but good grief i don't know how many like worrisome sort of moments and collisions with people who are problematic you can uh, manage in one lifetime uh, lifespan but there we go uh, baggage slash luggage right uh right more at least you know what you look like when you're older well indeed dreggers uh more of an idea for a future episode but why terminus stations i've yet to encounter a mainline terminus in poland uh, yeah um it's one for william barter to talk about i think oh man it just jittered again why are they not put the HS2 section of Euston on the east side close to St Pancras? Uh, for all sorts of reasons. Um, I think for in terms of where the tunnel has to fit, where it doesn't work. There's too much to there's too many utilities, too many tunnels to clash with on that side. Um, uh, even roof crossrail two in there. Yeah, uh, Xander is saying, what would the best way to implement a help Bahnhof in London be today? I mean, let's get Google Earth back up. <sighs> My gut feeling is that you take if you're going to do it, it's, it's so complicated up there. Maybe you take the chance to make it happen in central London. Like you actually just say, right, you know what, stuff it. We're gonna manage to get some, we're gonna, gonna get some portals going and actually we're gonna connect it through central London and, and maybe maybe you get it going through Farringdon, for example. So you, so you cut it through, through Farringdon and then cut. Because then, then if you do it through Farringdon, you've potentially got the benefit of, um, of uh, connections to Farringdon. So you've got connections through 
Uh, is Phantom going to be uh, Crossrail two as well, or is it just uh, is it just uh, Crossrail and Thameslink through Farringdon? Uh, get back to me on that. Um, there's lots of good connections through Farringdon, so do that. Slash, I might be getting confused. Anyway, anyway, through through Farringdon, and then you've got the railway corridor through from Liverpool Street to then put the railway underneath. Because even with a deep tunnel, you still need to be following existing rights of way um, to avoid going under lots of buildings. So you go under the existing railway, uh, and then you could come up and connect up with somehow manage to connect up with Stratford International. That's one way of doing. It. If you're going to go big, you know, you go big or go home. There's 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 such a little opportunity for doing anything. Oh, you didn't see any of that. Wait a minute. Let me go. Uh, let me go. Small face. Sorry, I should have been wibbling. So here is. Uh, thanks, everyone. Who's going to be at me in red. There's the, the train coming through London. You, the kind of here. So if you have tunnels here, skip Euston and then go through Farringdon. Have a kind of an underground station at Farringdon, perhaps. Uh, you know, I mean, there's, 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 there, there are possibilities. Maybe you could use the footprint underneath of. You know, there, there are options you could do. You could maybe buy, buy the market, keep the market, but like dig out everything underneath the market to, to allow you to build and then and then reinstate that. There, there, there are possibilities, things you could do if you're just being super imaginative, I don't know, with, with you know, if, if you were going all full me and not worrying too much about budget and looking at what would be a good idea. And then you could follow the, you could go under and then you could follow the lines out of Liverpool Street as your as your route corridor and then come through Stratford that way. That's that's maybe one possibility, but it, it's a lot of very complicated crane easting around here because there are so many things at play in terms of tunnels that you're interacting with. Vertical alignment is a nightmare to skip all the tunnels. Or complicated buildings rights. It's just, it is very complicated what you can actually achieve and do there. So uh, let's go back to my big face again while I answer more of these questions. Uh, Ed Fielden, any remote possibility that, say, four of the HS2 platforms at Euston could be converted to three platforms at a later date? No, not a, ta not a chance. Uh, there's too much in the way. Euston Road and all the development and the vertical line would be a disaster. Like, to... to yeah, yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, John Christoph is asking... Oh, was asking. Uh, extremely random question. Could one hypothetically send HS2 trains through Crossrail uh, between Old Oak Common and, like, Barking or something? No, they're, they're at a different ver quite a different vertical level, so uh, no uh, is the answer. <laughs> Uh, I mean, gauge-wise, <clears throat> I don't think you... Uh, gauge-wise, you could, but I think that might... Rest uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, needs a pro-rail government, yes, yes. Um, uh, Irish Craft Beer Show is pointing out I still want to obliterate their job. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I, I, I do. I do. Um, they design airports, I think, or do airport work. Thanks, uh, yeah. Uh, Mike Waldridge is saying, is there any diversionary scope built in for HS2 at all for engineering works and the like? No, there isn't. Uh, not really. Uh, in fact, no, definitely there isn't. Pineapple Man 3, are they leaving possible space for more platforms in Euston? Not really, no. Uh, Euston is a bit of a shambles politically because this government is uh, full. Uh, Jerry McGarry, absolutely do not demolish the Barbican. The Barbican is wonderful. Uh, Leo is saying, definitely not Crossrail 2. Um, just cross rail one uh, through found it. Yeah. Uh, oh, Simon's. Oh, hi, Simon. Uh, I'll get back to your message. Sorry, I've not messaged you back. I will. Um, hey, just one uh, cross rail not physically connected. Uh, yes. Uh, so there we are. The, the Smithfield Market buildings would have made a great surface station building. Yeah, I mean, it could be quite an interesting little hybrid there. You could do because you could maybe there are some bits there that you could possibly steal another bit and maybe maybe that make that new and maybe that could be one way to do it. Engineering wise, it'd be a nightmare because obviously dealing with all those foundations would be. But other people have done it. There was you know I've seen project railway construction projects that are more doolally than that where you keep the fabric of a building above, ex excavate the kind of the floor space. Uh, and then use that as, as a dig out from that excavation. For me, that would possibly be one way of doing it, is build that station in that alignment, bring the curve around into it, and then it's kind of pointing in the right direction to then go up. If we, In fact, if we go back, let's have a look. Uh, go back to small face and bring that up. Yeah, so if we go down here, you can imagine that you, you, you curve it, you perhaps come down here and then curve to bring it in, and then you could... Uh, I think there are possibly some kind of more modern buildings that you could uh, bully... Uh, to fit it in there's a few kind of things you can maybe maybe shotgun some of these big glass nonsenses and to kind of swap them out anyway there are things you could do maybe but you know excavating underneath some of the, the market and then turn shotgunning it and turning it into a you know even partially you know maybe doing it partially and excavating part of it and then letting it be market again afterwards you know there are different ways you could do things i'm sure It'd be interesting to understand whether it you know and how deep you'd have to go and blah 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 and so on and so forth It'd be quite cool i think that that'd be an interesting option and then you can see it's sort of then aligned uh to to then line up and get over to so that's that's one possibility it strikes me as a, a kind of an obvious station shaped lump that you could use but uh it's a big it's a big job that so um 
What's actually at the end of the platforms in Houston? Uh, not not much. Uh, from all the photos I've seen, it's just like a through station that happens to be at the end of a line. Uh, no, not quite. I think it, there's, there's a lot of stuff being built at that end, like uh, TFL concourse and stuff. John Christoph, uh, fair enough. I think there's a crossover somewhere from just one to the conventional. Yeah, there's, there's, I think, there are some connections, but they're a bit dubious. Leo, for Farrington Hout Banoff, you could reuse the widen lines and send high speed trains to the Barbican tube station. No, I think you'd need dedicated infrastructure, otherwise, you're just crippling. Um, you are crippling. Actually, yes, yeah, I was going to say, you know that area, of that, that, that side of HS1 very well. Yeah, no, I, you wouldn't want to use existing infrastructure. You've crippled existing infrastructure capacity. Um, oh, someone's suggesting we should... Richard Smith is suggesting we should repurpose um, uh, Hazards of Parliament uh, into a new station. There we go. Uh, I like it. Oh, all right, I've caught up. I have caught up. Oh, my goodness. There we go. So those are the sorts of routes. H oh, in terms of actual routes, well, all of them. <laughs> you know, Manchester, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Liverpool, the whole works, right? How whatever ones can be justified running. Um, the, the world is your oyster. Literally, that's your connection. Oh, it's 2016. Let's try and let's try and uh, wrap this up, shall we? I've wittered for quite long enough. Oh, in fact, I mean, do send more questions, but I'll, I'll close up on that. Uh, hopefully, that's, I don't know. Has that been useful? Have I kind of covered the ground that you wanted me to? Honestly, yeah, send feedback. Whether that's kind of made sense. Um, I'm going to go back to small face. In fact, I'm going to get rid of my face entirely. I'm going to then put the slides back up. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't actually answer the question, did I? Right, small face again. I'll keep small face up to remind myself of the question here. Will there ever be a direct link to the European mainland? I hope so. I got a very short, fairly short answer to this. It's like, yeah, I, I, I really do hope that there will be a direct link from places outside of London uh, to the European mainland. However, I don't think that the pedestrian path and connection is so bad. It's not a disaster. It's kind of like just an airport connection, which isn't the end of the world. But I do think that a through connection is a good idea because having just travelled across Europe, um, it is annoying to, to there it is an annoyance to change. It's not the end of the world, but it is an annoyance. Um, and it would be nice to have connections. From, you know, imagine catching a train from you know Manchester to to Rome. It'd be awesome. Uh, it would be really cool to do that. Um, and it would do, it would decrease some of that power that that London has. You know, it would, it would you know people often London becomes a destination for that. I I think it'd be a good idea. You know, so. Right, oh, I'm going to now end it. I'm going to get rid of my face and I'm going to do this and say um, thank you everyone for, for, for listening uh, in audio only when I do eventually get the podcast up because uh, 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 the podcast is a bit broken at the moment. It's my fault uh, and I'm trying to automate it a bit better and make it work properly and also I'm trying to work out how to get OBS to, to automatically just record the audio. Um, I should also start recording these as... Oh, anyway, I'll get there. But podcast is a bit broken at the moment. I need to speak to Heel um, to to automate the process a bit more because uh, it's a bit much to expect someone to just do it without them being a permanent paid, you know, administrator. Maybe I need to get someone who is a permanent paid person. Uh, don't send your CVs in. Uh, I'll have that chat in the Discord with the Patreon people as to whether they think it's a good idea and how much that might look like in terms of payment. But anyway, we'll we'll get there. I do need someone to drive it, but yeah, it's too much for me to to run. Um. John Stone is saying, uh, you did Brussels, Nottingham return with a through fare, just changing St. Pancras and loved it. It is, yeah, I mean, oh yeah, it's a good point. I mean, it's the St. Pancras change, that is a nice St. Pancras change, to be fair. It is doable. I don't, so it's worth pointing out. In fact, let's get my giant face back and this is going to ruin my chaptering when I do YouTube chaptering. No, in fact, you know what? No, I'll, I'll do it at the end. I'll come back to this at the end. Let's keep, let's keep going through my, my fiddling. Right, so Patreon, Discord, PayPal. Um, yes, support me on the Patreon, particularly if you've got suggestions. I know a few people... Um, uh, yeah, a few people talking about uh, things that they would like to 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 see as suggestions. And um, the way, the best way to do that is to go into the Discord server. There's a channel that's Patreon only, and you can pop your suggestion in there, and people then vote on it whether they think it's a good idea or not. Um, so, yes, do that uh, because I, it's good. I, I I look forward to seeing your suggestions, and and they allow me to continue to do stuff that you like, <laughs> basically. Um, oh, Discord. Right, the Discord server. Yes, Gareth Dennis. Oh, sorry, patreon.com slash Gareth Dennis for the Patreon. Uh, Gareth Dennis at UK slash Discord for the Discord server, which is where all of what's just been happening in the live chat happens, but more. Uh, the big Discord uh, reshaping of, of Rail Natter Discord report is is due. I know I just need to sit and think about it a bit because there, there are too many channels and it's a bit confusing. For, to be honest, a bit intimidating for people who want to join the server and, and get involved. And then if you just want to chuck pennies at me, you can do that through paypal.me slash Gareth Dennis. Um, Yes. 
We're here to do something remarkable because we've been given unique and wonderful access. I'm Tim Dunn and I'm back in a new series exploring amazing railway architecture. They've actually given me the keys. Beautiful locations. <laughs> amazing, isn't it? Fascinating stories. And so this is the deepest bit that you can get to. From the old... I'd never spotted that. ...to the new. The bridge is a stunning piece of engineering. This is wonderful. The architecture the railways built starts Monday at 8, new and exclusive to yesterday. Yeah, Tim's back. Uh, and it happened, what was it? It was this week already. So the first episode's out already. Um, I'm quite pleased because I didn't realise that... Um, that Balach Mile was going to be the first uh, featured in the first episode. That was one of my suggestions. I suggested Balach Miles. And they found a really nice person to talk to. And the person who they spoke to um, added extra stuff in, which made me very pleased. The old uh, viaduct that was featured. It was really good. Watch it. It'd be great. Uh, people are asking if Tim's going to be on again. I need to speak to Tim, actually, whether he wants to pop on. It's a bit, it's, it's a little late, and it kind of feels like he was on quite recently, and he's very busy. But uh, I'm seeing him on Thursday, so I'll, I'm seeing him tomorrow night. So I'll, um, uh, I, shall, I shall ask him. Uh, but it's lovely television. Dean and I watch every 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 night uh, that it's out, and, and it's lovely. So, right, that's that. What other plugs have I got going on? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I never really plug this on Rail Natter, but if you are interested, um, this series is back. It's had a bit of a, a month pause because holiday, but, um, yeah, the Archipelago series is back, um, and I'm sure nothing... We're, we're, it's 1937 on our little collection of islands, and I'm sure nothing can go wrong at all. Um, everything's fine and the railway's dominance will continue to be... Actually, they're, they're already not dominant anymore. But um, anyway, so join that. And you can see... Look at this. Look at this you, can see, uh, you can see how nice um, all of our various... If you want to know what on earth all that is, go and find that series where you can watch. Oh. Um, next week, episode 80. Uh, Gary Keener's joining us. We've got Gary back. Um, he's going to go through... We're going to basically do a page turn. We're going to meander through the new edition of the OLE book. Um, and it's going to be, it's, you know, we get to say Arter, uh, Arter has, has done this amazing artwork. It looks great. Um, it's, uh, that's going to be a good episode. And we will have lots of electrification questions, I'm sure. It should be a good one. Oh, yes. Now, right back to my large face. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <sighs> right. So, lots of interesting points being brought up there. Um, Yes, I, 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 yeah, I want to make the point that the HS, the current proposals of, of like changing off HS2 and getting onto HS1 are basically okay. They're limiting, as Dave pointed out, for, for sleeper trains because you can't run a constant, a kind of a, a sleeper right the way through, which is frustrating. And I don't think it's a good long term solution, but it's not, it's not disastrous. You know, it's not a reason, it's certainly not a reason to oppose HS2 because there's not that link. It's just, you know, frustrating. It comes back to this whole idea there's not a long term plan, there's not a long term aspiration to like, you know, diminish the number of flights from, you know, they're not looking at, the government's not looking at Schiphol and going, ah, well, Schiphol is Britain's main hub airport, because it is, um, and we should try and diminish the, you know, the number of flights that go via, so all the Manchester, Birmingham, Newcastle, Leeds, all these flights that go to Schiphol and Frankfurt, maybe, those two big hub stations, we're going to do that via rail, so that means that there's a justification, no, not at all, and as David pointed out with his Freedom of Information request, the analysis just doesn't exist, it's just lost, so, you know, that link isn't... I'm glad they're not building it because, the propose, as we've established, the current proposals were crap. So it's a good thing they've not been built, frankly. But it does mean that that proposal is... You know, the the, the link, the long-term link, is a long way away. Oh, anyway, right. Uh, whew. There we go. It's, it's 2024. It was an hour and a half episode. Sorry, it got a bit long. Uh, but there we go. How about trains going up to Channel C? See how skipping London? Now, again, the whole point is that you can't skip London because if, um, if you're skipping London, you are... Um, undermining the the whole benefit of the all those timetable services you risk you know you're undermining the, the release capacity benefits remember hs2's main benefits are not on hs2 they're on the existing network so for every service that doesn't go to london you're re you're diminishing release capacity benefit which is critical oh uh that promo was kind of half in hd but it was tim is only available in sd yes yeah, sadly yesterday only public they, they 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 film in 8k and it goes out in like 480p it's really disappointing i know but there we go um yeah gary uh oh i'm gonna be in in fact if you watched if you watched tim dunn's little pre like his preamble 15 minute teaser before the first episode um yes i was i was mentioned associated with a certain piece of infrastructure which might make you all grin i recommend you go go on to tim's twitter and, and go find that video to, to have a laugh uh, yeah, Gary's coming on, which should be good fun. Uh, local MP advocated for sleepers from the UK to mainland Europe in an email to me. Very much agree with him. Yeah, I mean, it's a good idea, and it's 
yeah, that is potentially where the, the, the rubbish link might have been useful. But HS2 is not where we should be running sleeper trains anyway. HS2 is for uh, fast services only, not sleeper trains. So, uh, so in a way, yeah, you could run those and connect them onto the existing network. Uh, this, there, there are ways it means, I think. I think it'd be easier to establish a slower link. Uh, yeah, that, that's one for another episode, I think. Uh, but anyway, right, right, enough of me waffling. It's time for me to to bid you all um, farewell um, because that was that was quite that was quite epic. Hopefully that was good. Hopefully that was 576p actually, says Ed Field. Yeah, sorry, you're, you're right. I was, um, I was being mean. Um, IC250 is in the Intercity story. Uh, yes, probably. Uh, livery, that story. Right. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Right, that was it. That was a, that was a real matter. I've waffled plenty enough. Uh, <laughs> oh. Cheerio, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully that gave you everything you needed. Cheerio, cheerio.